I talk a lot of smack about HP on this channel, and they deserve every bit of it. But I have a secret that I'm going to share with you all. I absolutely love the HP Spectre X360. Kill the monster! This is my current 2018 HP Spectre X360 with an 8th gen i5, NVIDIA GeForce MX250, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD. Now I bought this used off eBay in 2021 for around 900 bucks. It overheated like crazy and only came with a 512 gigabyte Intel Optane drive. So I replaced the thermal paste, modded the cooling system to make it run a little cooler, then spent 10 hours finding drivers that actually worked until I finally had a good laptop. Now I know convertible laptops aren't for everyone, but they're definitely for me. I love being able to prop up the 4K 15 inch screen like a little TV and watch things while I'm eating, and then fold it back so I can start work for the day. When I need an extra screen, I bring it up to my office, fold that display back, and connect my monitor to it through the HDMI port. I plug my mouse into the USB port, and I fast charge my phone through the Thunderbolt or USB-C ports. The numpad is great to easily press numbers so I can calculate all my losses for the week, and the dedicated GPU makes video playback a lot smoother, but I need something more powerful. More power! Sometimes the GPU does have a hard time keeping up with the 4K screen, and the CPU throttles constantly under heavy load, regardless of temperature. And unfortunately, throttle stop doesn't work anymore because of the whole plundervolt thing with Intel chips, so I can't undervolt it to keep the temperatures down and keep it from throttling itself. And as I'm finding myself with less free time, I'm doing more editing on the go, so I need something with beefier specs. So off to eBay I went! One thing I'm infamous for is valuing function over form. I don't care if it's held together by duct tape and it's 40 different colors. If it works and I can get it for cheap, I'm in. So I found this banged up example that was exactly what I was looking for. A 2020 model with a 4K OLED touch display, quad Bang & Olufsen speakers, 10th Gen i7, 1TB NVMe, which really didn't matter because I was going to swap my drive in there anyways, and 16GB of soldered RAM which I despise, but it was good enough and being soldered wasn't really a deal breaker for me. All this for less than $700 when the MSRP for this is over $1600. So I ordered it, and I immediately cancelled it, because I found this, the same exact laptop in much better condition with the problem of having a stiff trackpad. Now all my fellow technicians watching this video know right away what a stiff trackpad means. Spicy pillow. When lithium-ion batteries begin to fail, they release gas inside their pouch, causing the cells to swell up and exert pressure on everything around it. This issue is so common in all laptops that as soon as the customer mentions anything about the trackpad, it's the first thing you check. And 99% of the time, that's the problem. So I immediately ordered this. And here it is, in all its glory. It really is a beautiful laptop. HP says this is a gem cut design, and that every angle is precisely chiseled through aluminum using CNC machining. That's a lot of words to say, this thing is fucking beautiful. The screen is in perfect condition, the chassis is free of scuffs, and the keyboard is nice and responsive. I like it a lot better than the old keyboard. The trackpad is hard to press though, and sure enough, you can see a gap developing in the bottom panel where the battery is most likely swelling. So let's get to work. A few screws here, then these stupid screws buried under the rubber feet for some god-awful reason. Immediately after removing the screw where the battery is, the panel pops right up. That's how you know this battery is definitely swelling. Let's look at the bottom panel. You can actually see where the swollen battery cells are rubbing against the panel, causing it to get a little shiny. On the intakes, I like to see how dusty it is, because that's usually a good indicator of the environment the laptop was previously used in. This one looks good, it's not too dusty. Ah, there it is. Look at those swollen cells. Those spicy pillows. Alright, time to get this time bomb out of my laptop and out of my house. A few screws here and the battery comes right out. Something Apple should take note of. Now I want to pause here to give HP credit for multiple things. Look at all the modular components here. The SD card slot, the headphone jack, and most importantly, the charging port and the power button. Two of the most commonly replaced wear items, all replaceable with just a Phillips screwdriver. It's a shame the RAM is soldered, but you can't win it all. The first thing I always do when I get a new laptop for myself or for a customer is change the thermal paste and clean the heatsink vents. These vents are almost spotless, so this laptop was in a nice clean environment. The paste though, eeh, yikes. 
This stuff is as brittle as my old Corolla's undercarriage. This thing was definitely overheating on the previous user. Well, not for me. Let's change it. Cover those cheesies with Thermal Grizzly Greasy, and we're in business. Since I'm replacing the NVMe with my own, I'm going to reseat the thermal pads so it's making connection to the NAND on my drive. Perfect. Now let's put everything back together and test it. With Windows 10 and Windows 11, you can usually just transplant a boot drive without issues. There are exceptions of course, like if you go from an old Intel to a new Intel with different rapid storage technology drivers, the drive won't boot. And sometimes AMD has a hard time and will get performance drops if you don't install Windows fresh on a new drive. But it looks like mine is working. I noticed the CPU fan on the right side sounds like the bearing is worn out a bit. I'll probably have to change it in the coming months, but for now it's still spinning good and it's not too bad. There is a lot of coil wine from the left side of the laptop where the GPU is. Every time you move the cursor you can hear it. But, you know what, for the price, I can deal with that. Alright, drivers are updated. Temps look good enough, but I really won't know until I replace that battery, as some laptops don't use full power unless the battery is plugged in. I don't think this laptop is one of them, but I just want to make sure. I don't know if this camera captures this screen well enough, but wow, this thing is nice. The colors are rich and the blacks are super deep. The display is HDR, so I turned that on and I calibrated it, and movies look so good. The keyboard is probably one of the best in the industry, honestly, right up there with the older ThinkPads and the newer MacBooks. The responsiveness is crisp and they feel really sturdy. Since I'm happy with everything and it's passed all tests, let's order a battery. I hop on eBay and look for a genuine battery from a seller with a good reputation and a good return policy. I found one for 80 bucks, which is way less than what HP wants to charge, so I ordered it. And it turns out this battery is not genuine like it was advertised, and it is defective, so it shuts off whenever the computer is under heavy load, and it's on battery power. So that's not cool. And I want to take this time to highlight the fact that this is what makes the repair industry so goddamn difficult and stressful. The lack of reliable replacement parts both aftermarket and OEM. I did search for an OEM HP battery, and I could only find one seller from HP's website that actually had it in stock. Now keep in mind, this laptop is not that old, yet I could only find one company that sold it, and it wasn't even a genuine battery, it was an aftermarket OEM compatible battery for $200. This is ridiculous, and this is why I also had that poll a few weeks ago asking if you all agree that companies should be limited in what they could charge for replacement parts, because all you have to do to discourage repair is price your parts to make it not financially feasible to buy. Anyways, I ordered another battery, which was definitely genuine this time. As you can see here, it has the exact same stickers, and the HP software picks it up as genuine. Perfect. The battery looks good and holds a decent charge, so now I can do a proper comparison. The differences between my old model and the new one are pretty significant. The screen itself is the same size, but the bezel and the frame are much smaller, making the laptop less bulky and more tempting to bring on trips. The lid is lighter, and the hinges feel smooth and sturdy compared to the clunky, fragile feeling of the old one. And the vents have been expanded to improve the cooling, which was a much needed improvement. Overall, I'm really happy with this laptop that only cost me about $800 and 2 hours of my time. I ended up selling my old laptop for $750, so my net cost was only $50. Bucks. I'm really happy and I hope to use this thing for the foreseeable future. Now before you all run off to eBay to find yourself a deal on this laptop, I want to make it very clear. I would never recommend an average consumer to buy this computer. This laptop is like a used Maserati. When it works, it's amazing. But it is going to break. And unless you're a mechanic that can fix it when it does, you're going to regret it. So don't buy this unless you're prepared to repair it yourself or pay to have it repaired. Because the battery will swell and the thermal pace will need to be changed. And that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of this type of content instead of my usual shitposting and memes.